Magnetism Is this magic? Isn't it awesome? Yes, as with the word magic, this phenomenon also has something to do with the M word, magnet. What we've seen is no magical feat, but the simple science of magnetism. Let's try to understand the science behind it. Classification of Magnets one of the ways in which we can classify them is based on their occurrence. Two types of magnets exist, natural magnets and artificial magnets. Naturally occurring magnets are irregular in shape and are weak. Lodestone is the strongest naturally occurring magnet. It is black in color and was the first magnet ever discovered. Some other naturally occurring magnetic materials are pyrotite, columbite and even basalt has some magnetic properties. But these magnets are much weaker than lodestone. Man-made magnets are called artificial magnets. Depending upon the applications, artificial magnets are of different shapes and sizes. For example, bar magnet, circular magnet, button type magnet and horseshoe magnet. Almost all the magnets that you will ever come across, including the ones we saw, are artificial. The magnets are also classified into two main categories, permanent and temporary. The magnets that retain their magnetism in the absence of any external magnetic field are called permanent magnets. Their magnetic strength never really fades on its own. And the magnets that cannot retain their magnetism or retain it for a very short time are called temporary magnets. Temporary magnets act as magnets only while they are within a strong magnetic field. Let's now learn the properties of magnets. A magnet has two ends called the magnetic poles. Magnetic poles always exist in pairs. When a bar magnet is suspended freely from its center by a thread, one end of the magnet points towards the north and the other end points to the south of the earth. The end that points to the north is called the north pole of the magnet and the other end which points towards the south is called the south pole of the magnet. When a magnet is placed on a piece of paper and the paper is gently tapped, the ion fillings are arranged in a particular manner. Such a pattern of arrangement shows the magnetic lines of force. These lines indicate the strength and direction of a magnetic field. We have seen previously that magnetic materials are attracted to a magnet. The region around the magnet where the force of attraction can be detected is called the magnetic field. The direction of the magnetic field is from the North Pole to the South Pole. If the magnetic field lines are very close to each other in a particular region, the strength of the magnetic field in that region is very large. If the magnetic field lines are far from each other in a particular region, the strength of the magnetic field in that region is very small. The tangent at any point gives the direction of intensity of the magnetic field. Take these two magnets. The north and south pole should be marked on these magnets. Now, bring the like poles near and see what happens. The field lines of the same poles repel each other. Now, bring the unlike poles near. See, the magnets attract each other. When a pair of magnets of opposite poles is placed side by side, the field lines attract each other. This proves that unlike poles attract each other and like poles repel each other. Hiya! Well, if you cut a magnet into two, it won't lose its magnetic field, but would give you two new magnets. Did you know that the Earth behaves like a magnet? Our Earth behaves like a huge magnet. In fact, we can test this by suspending a bar magnet from a long, thin piece of thread. It will soon settle with one end pointing towards Earth's North Pole and the other towards the South Pole. 
A compass we use to find the direction is based on this principle. Its needle will always point towards the North Pole. Earth's magnetic field, also referred to as its geomagnetic field, is created by the movement of molten metal deep inside. Our Earth has several layers inside. At the very center is the solid inner core composed of iron. Within the inner core, temperatures reach about 5700 degrees centigrade, 10292 degree Fahrenheit, but the pressure created by gravity will prevent this region from becoming a liquid. Around this inner core is the outer core, a region composed of iron, nickel and small quantities of other metals. Unlike the solid inner core, the outer core has a lower pressure which allows the metals to exist in a liquid state. This liquid metal is continuously circulating due to Earth's spin and other forces. The movement of the liquid metal generates electric currents which then produce magnetic fields around these currents. On a compass, the north end of the needle will point towards Earth's north pole, meaning the south end will point towards our south pole. The Earth's magnetic field is tilted 11 degrees from the spin axis of the Earth. Because of this, a compass needle isn't pointing exactly towards the north pole but rather just a little bit away from it. To completely describe the magnetic field at any point on the surface of the Earth, we have to specify its three elements at that point. Namely, declination, D, angle of dip or inclination, I, and horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field, HE. First, the declination. We all know that the Earth is spherical in shape. On this spherical surface, we can draw an infinite number of imaginary circles passing through the Earth's geographical north and south poles. All these circles have one common diameter, which is the line joining the geographical north and south poles or the Earth's axis of rotation. These imaginary circles are called longitudes. Each of these circles, along with the Earth's axis of rotation, can be drawn in one plane. This plane is called the geographic meridian. The geographical meridian, when viewed from top, appears to be a straight line. Similarly, we can obtain the magnetic meridian by drawing a line from the magnetic north and south poles. This magnetic meridian also looks like a straight line when viewed from the top of the chosen point. At any given point, the geographical meridian and the magnetic meridian together look like two intersecting straight lines. The acute angle between these two straight lines is known as declination. Declination changes from place to place on Earth. Declination is minimal at the equator and goes on increasing with latitude. Angle of dip or inclination A magnetic compass needle is provided with a pivot such that it can rotate freely about a vertical axis. The needle comes to rest when aligned with the magnetic meridian to indicate the magnetic north. If the needle were also provided with a pivot, such that it can rotate freely about a horizontal axis, it would also rotate in the magnetic meridian plane. If the compass is placed in the northern hemisphere, its north end dips down from the horizontal position. If the compass is placed in the southern hemisphere, its south end dips down from the horizontal. The angle through which it dips with respect to the horizontal plane at that point is known as the angle of dip or the inclination. In other words, inclination is the angle that the total magnetic field of the Earth, BE, makes with the horizontal surface of the Earth at a given point. The inclination is zero at the equator 
and increases as the latitude increases. If this compass is placed atop the magnetic pole, it will come to rest in the vertical position. Now we are discuss about electromagnetic effect. When current passes through this wire and we keep this compass near that wire, the needle will deflect. This will not work if the current in the wire is feeble. However, in that case, if we remove a part of the insulated coating and keep the compass near that region, you will see the deflection. If we bring the north pole of a bar magnet near the red needle, the needle will show deflection. The needle now aligns itself in the direction of the magnetic field of this bar magnet. We know that in a bar magnet, the field line emerge from the north pole, curve around the magnet and end at south pole. So if we move the compass in the direction of the magnetic field, then its needle will also align itself in the direction of the field. With this knowledge in mind, let's go back to our copper wire. Here, the electric current in the wire produces magnetic field around the wire. Or in other words, the wire becomes a temporary magnet. This is the reason that the compass needle deflects when brought near this wire. Any conductor such as a straight wire through which electric current is flowing is an electromagnet. That's because there's a magnetic field around it. However, we can make the magnet strong by wrapping the wire around a piece of iron such as an iron nail. Even if the current is the same in both cases, this one will result in a stronger magnetic field. Now there are some factors on which the strength of the electromagnet depends. The current flowing in the wire is one of them. If we increase the flow of the current in the wire, the strength of the magnetic field of this electromagnet will also increase. Another way to increase the strength of this magnetic field is by increasing the number of turns of the wire around the nail. More the number of turns, stronger the magnetic field will be. Magnetic field in a solenoid Let us study what is a solenoid. An insulated copper coil is wound around some cylindrical cardboard or plastic tube such that the length of the coil is greater than its diameter. Then it behaves like a magnet when an electric current flows through it. It is called a solenoid. Each turn of the coil behaves like a magnet. In figure A, current is flowing into the coil in clockwise direction. So, the left hand side of each turn of the coil acts as south pole, whereas right hand side of each turn of the coil acts as north pole. Some application of electromagnet You must have seen large machines used to lift up cars. They have an electromagnet in them. This electromagnet is so strong that it can lift the whole weight of the car. Electromagnets are also used to separate metal objects from a pile of junk. The Shanghai Maglev train is touted as the world's fastest train and it works on the concept of electromagnetism. Working of electric wheels Here's a very simplistic diagram of an electric bell. This is the inner structure of the bell. When we push the button, the circuit gets completed and the current flows from the positive to the negative terminal. But when the current flows through the coil, it becomes an electromagnet. This electromagnet then attracts this soft iron towards it. And in the process, the striker strikes the gong and the sound is produced. But notice what happens when the striker hits the gong. As soon as the soft iron is shifted away from its original spot, the circuit breaks. It no longer connects this wire with the terminal of the battery. And when the circuit breaks, the current stops flowing. So this electromagnet gets demagnetized, after which the soft iron goes back to its start position. This process will continue until the switches open again. As soon as we release the push button, the circuit breaks and the bell stops ringing. That's the basic idea of how an electric bell works.